and sunshine. Australia, it's so big, about the size of Europe, that we don't have time in one film to show you all of it. So, we're going to show you some of it. My some of it. This is a small part of New South Wales. We'll be visiting Sydney and Canberra, which are famous, and also Woi Woi, Wagga Wagga, Grong Grong, and Gumly Gumly, which are a little less famous. However, we start our little journey 40 miles north of Sydney in a very small place indeed. One divine halt, unknown in the annals of railway history. I'm here for one unique reason. I want to show you it. It starts here, and there's no, no ticket office, no porters, no gents, no ladies, and it finishes here. There's nobody here, there's nobody anywhere. There's only me waiting for a train. Wait, hist, I hear the Gosford flyer. Any minute now, I have to stop it. The only way is by doing this. Even then, sometimes, it might not. Oh! By careful editing, I managed to catch the right train. I wanted to show you Wonderbine because, in many ways, it sums up my part of Australia. We're only just north of the Sydney suburbs, and yet we are in dense virgin bush, the magnificent Karingai Chase, which is named after the Aborigines who once lived here. People can and do get lost in it. The Aborigines got lost terminally, but I suppose that's, in quotes, progress. So we ask the question, what am I doing here? Well. In 1950, my parents emigrated out here, and I thought they were mad. However, in 1959, I came out to see them, and I went mad. I fell in love with the place. I couldn't get enough of it. The old steam trains took two and a half hours from Sydney to Woi You could sit on the rear balcony and view, at leisurely pace, the distant blue hills and creeks flowing into the Pacific. So, it's 2KOM, all this piece going on Sydney Terminal, number one platform, a four-car double-deck service, the journey now only takes an hour in these gleaming air-conditioned trains. But I suppose that's progress too. I come out here from England every two or three years. My dad died in 1969, but mum still lives in this little town about 50 miles north of Sydney. Now this, this isn't Aborigine for Bench. This is the name of my hometown, Woi Woi. It, in Aborigine, it means deep water. Which Woi means deep and which means water, I will never know. And now, home. I say Woi Woi is my hometown, and in a way, it is. Although I was born in India and live in England. Everyone knows me, and I know everyone, including the porter. 
who gives me the local gossip for the last three years. Woi Woi is surrounded by a maze of inlets called Brisbane Water. But don't be confused, it's nowhere near Brisbane. It was once very peaceful, but now it's growing so fast that it's almost become a northern suburb of Sydney. If you want to avoid getting lost, it's best to take a taxi, but unlike London, you at least meet the same driver more than once and get to know his name. Fancy getting you, Gordon. The porter said this is your birthday today. Yeah, who told you that, Spike? The porter on the platform, yeah. Oh, dear, oh, dear. He said the next cab in the rank is Gordon's. I said, I don't believe it. I yeah. don't believe it. Quite a coincidence, Spike. I didn't expect to see you this time of the day. I'll tell you what, I speak to my mum on the phone and she tells me that everything's moving ahead very fast here. Yes, the district is uh, bursting at the seams, Spike. A lot of people are migrating from the Sydney uh, metropolitan areas to this area now. I remember this road when you could sleep in it oh. and never get run over. That's right. There were so few cars in Woi Woi at one time that the dogs used to chase them like mad. Do you remember? Dogs they would go did. for the cars. Yes, they did. They but, used to. but now there's so many motor cars that the dogs are absolutely shagged out. They, they can't keep up with it, so they've stopped barking. Have you noticed? That's right, yes. I'll make you straight for Mum's house. Oh, yes. Good. How is she keeping? She's keeping fine. She's about 93 now, you know. I think she goes out playing rugby every day, though. I can never get her on the phone. Can't you? Oh, well, no, that's the reason. Tea, Mum. Nice of you to recognise me. Oh, well, I should hope I recognise my son. <laughs> oh, lovely to see you. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I'll sit down and get some tea, huh? I can do with this, Mum. Have they tuned the piano? Yes. Oh, that's marvellous. Did you tune the piano? Good the job. keyboard's been clean, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's still very hard to play though, isn't it? He, he ordered it, he ordered it, so that the tension would be better. Yeah, very nice. Could I have some more tea? Yes, you could. Woi Woi's Main Street. It's noonday traffic throbbing past the amnesia-making architecture with all traces of originality carefully erased. An estate agent's paradise. Ah, this is the simple boy boy of yesteryear, exactly as it was when I first came here, with only the occasional human being looking over the watergirt islands. So happily, progress hasn't engulfed everything, and in fact, one of my favourite walks starts right at the back of my mother's house. Hello. You hear those parrots? Pretty, aren't they? Um... I'm walking up the Blackwall Mountain. This Blackwall Mountain was thrown up in primeval times by volcanic upheaval. Uh, the thing is, I'm going to go up this mountain. I'm going to meet you at the top because it's got a very beautiful view. I might stop on the way. There you are. I told you I would. Upwards, ever upwards, through thicket and thinnet and eucalyptus trees in search of the exquisite. The nice thing about going for country walks is the possibility of a chance encounter with a stranger. This caterpillar is a giant among caterpillars, inasmuch that he's going to feed on leaves, but the nearest leaves he's coming to are easily 20 feet up. So he's got a tremendous amount of courage, that or he's a complete idiot. Good luck, Eric. As you can see, Woi Woi and its environs are a complete mix of unspoilt bush and spoilt suburban development. Down there is where Etalong meets the Pacific Ocean. Well, this is the reward for climbing the mountain. It's a stunning view. And this, where we're sitting now, would have been an Aborigine lookout. They might even have seen Flinders, Captain Flinders, who came up here in the longboat in about 1791, I think it was. You might have seen him come up here, go right the way around the island here like this, further inland. 
Of course, then all this civilization hadn't reached here. And the most important thing about this is you notice the way that they cling to the coast, leaving the hinterland of Australia almost empty. But they're crowded around here and the density is increasing all the time. It's been estimated that something like 70% of Australians live within a good day's walk of the coast. This in a country almost as big as the United States. It's so different here from the stereotype Australia of the lager adverts. It's clean, formal, regimented, and could almost be the south coast of England. In fact, it's often more formal and regimented than the south coast of England. That's a better one. Do one. Nice one. Right up. Holding three, June. Never mind. We won't be four after this one, please. Oh. No, you want a bit of green, love? <laughs> Jack high one is. Just try and get that to it. Yes, Phil. The first one wasn't a fluke. Great bowling. Lovely bowling. Oh, come on. Lovely bowl. Champion bowl. Oh, the cooker barrels have come at the right time. But, in the midst of all this, there's a little sanctuary I'd like to visit. It's a private garden that plays host to a huge variety of wildlife, most of which can only be seen in cages in England. In Australia, exotic wildlife is in abundance. But, even round Woi Woi, the native flora and fauna are slowly being destroyed by dogs, cats and people introduced from Europe. <laughs> Wildwoods, as it is called, is the creation of a Mr. and Mrs. Hicks who built their own house and carved this garden out of a dense bush some 50 years ago, creating an oasis in a suburban desert. Well, there's nobody in the central coast that I know of who's doing this sort of work. You're the only one. And apart from that, you've got to worry about getting food all the time for them. You know, they, they eat about... They eat the bread, the cheese and I have the bread and fat. A few miles away is a more typical garden undergoing spring cleaning. It belongs to Jo McKettrick, who emigrated from Nottingham with her family 12 years ago. Despite strange men in the garden, she seems to like it here. The weather makes it live, makes the whole place livable. I mean, you know, you can have no money at all, but you've got your sunshine and your beach. I mean, you, if you live in the middle of England, you have, if, if it's raining, it's bad and you've got no money, you're down, really down. What do you miss out here most? Go on, say it. Fish and chips. Pork sausages. Pork sausages. Pork sausages, folks. Don't forget that. If you come to Australia, you'll miss pork sausages. What's that noise down there? Oh, that's the uh, flick man. He comes and sprays the garden and the house. Flicking things off, have <laughs> Oi, when you finish down there, can you bring us some of your specimens? Not yours, not yours, no. Some of the animals. Hippopotamuses in jars, things like that. What insects have you got then? Well, they come and they spray uh, for uh, cockroaches, redbacks, funnelwebs. Ah, wait a minute, hold it now. You loved Australia, but then suddenly <laughs> these you insects got all these things. <laughs> Quite frightening. Is this normal? My mother's got a garden. She never has it sprayed. Well, she's fortunate. We had the cat sprayed. <laughs> oh, that would be... <laughs> now, it's just something that you have to be aware of when you when you live in Australia. What What do you mean, the, the red back that bites your bum on the seat? On the toilet it? seat, yes. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen any of them yourself? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. What was your reaction when you saw your first one? Freak out. Did you scream? I... Said and did a few more things and just scream. My God, isn't that amazing? What happens when you get bitten by a funnel web? Do you get paralyzed? Nausea. Or 
paralysis. And that gradually sets in, does it? How long have you got? Coma. Into a coma. Yeah. That's all, that's all I mean. Eventually it ends in death. Are you listening to all this, you little swine? It's unbelievable that a creature that that size could actually put a whole human being down. Mind you, steamrollers can do the same, you know. <laughs> yes. And you can end up as a bookmarker. <laughs> A much more charming example of Australian wildlife is the bellbird. They're dying out around Woi Woi, but can always be heard 50 miles away in the Strickland State Forest, where its delightful sound mingles with other whispering mysteries of the Australian bush. This is the equivalent of hog calling in America. <laughs> The rough translation of this is, where the bloody hell are you? Marla, Marla, because you're not getting it quite clearly, and you're not a kangaroo, <coughs> this wouldn't interest you, but apparently a kangaroos are very keen on Marla, 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 I'm sure you'd, you might like to write that down on a piece of paper uh, for further reference. I mean, you never know if you come up against a kangaroo, you shout mala 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 moo and things go well for you. Look, Min. Come on, Min. Come on. My old friend, Can Beverly Spears, a manic conservationist, lives here. I must tell you a funny story about Mindy. Tell me. And is Louis. The, is this the, uh, the accepted way of, of transporting carrying, that's the way they're carrying. kangaroos? Is that that's right? right? This is Bluey. There was a Curly, but Curly died. And Bluey got very sick and well, threatened. Man. They're a different colour. These are red kangaroos. They're the red. Red. They grow to about six feet. Yeah, eight feet. The males and the females, which I've got here. This is a female, the big one. Yes. And the other one is a male. Yes. This is Bluey. I see. What time do they come into season, and what time do they start to mature? Blue, blue, come on. Blue, come on, come on, Mindy. Once we get her drinking here, Min, you want some, you want some, some milk? There you are. Goodness me, come on, Blue. Blue, 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 blue. This is the one that'll kill for milk. If you give another one a bottle, she'll jump all over it. Tell me, how do you come by them, first of all? Well, anyone that goes out there shooting, believe it or not, they've got a conscience, and they usually bring back the joeys in the pouches. These joeys are the results of, of murdered, murdered mothers? Murdered mothers. Is that yes, right? exactly. And they bring them back to the wildlife, and the wildlife bring different foster homes, like me and other people that look after them. So Come you're going to be lumbered for the rest Come of your life with an increasing number of kangaroos? No, no, the wildlife actually prefer to take them out and they re release them, would you believe? Oh, it? they do take them quite a way out, do they? They release them where they were found to be oh. shot again. Oh, my God. This is God. what I'm fighting. There's no sort of concept no, 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 of wanting no, no, to be no, 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 no. concerned about kangaroos at all. I mean, even no. though it's the national emblem, I would say that kangaroos have a pretty rough time in this country. And these are all orphans which have been brought in from mothers who have been killed, mostly on motorways. Girls? As the day wore on, Beverly asked me to join her and her husband for cocktails in their regular evening ritual. Well, I'm, I'm, I really think there's too many here. I believe in birth control and I, um, I definitely consider... Are you getting a bit of smoke there? No, I'm all right, thank you. I definitely think that they shouldn't bring any more people in. There's too many people here now. Actually, you should sit up wind. It's all right. I'm trying to be a bronchial asthmatic. <laughs> well, then you ought to go live at Malora. Uh, I see that, by the way, that you haven't completed the bathroom. No, and we're putting an inside and an outside bathroom. My husband's completing the bathroom, and I've got the most gorgeous, old-fashioned bath. But I think claustrophobia in there. I just love this. I see. So basically, what you, you settle for a bath, and the walls will follow. Will follow, yes. Actually, we're thinking about having compacted earth walls. They're much easier to put in around us. Would that be to give it a sort of an oldie-worldie Australian atmosphere? An earthy look. To this, an earthy look to the thing. Start off with the bar, the rest will come. It's nice to see Australia as it really is. This is how it should be, sir. So this is the unspoiled Australia? Yeah. I see. Well, I've seen quite a few spoiled bits and uh, this is quite an interesting unspoiled bit here. While Beverly and her husband relax to the sound of bellbirds, other Australians share the soft murmurs of the night. Australians will bet on anything, 
even flies crawling up a window pane or raindrops crawling down. In New South Wales, though, they don't have to because of the poker machines or pokies, the Australian version of the fruit machine. They're all over the place. Into them pours a fortune, although few ever win one, even though the jackpot can be as high as $5,000. A person will book a machine and stay with it until it pays off. In one year recently, the betting turnover in Australia was three times as high as its defense bill. In one of these establishments nearby, you can even cash your pension on the spot. By my calculation, the average British pensioner would blow his weekly income after 28 minutes play. How often, how often do you play the game? Very often. Do you come in every day? Oh, no. We come down about three times a week, yeah. Three times a week. Would you say that was addictive? I yes. Mean, did you knock it off? Are you an addict? No, I'm not an addict. I'm or, or the, addict. He's, he's not an addict. He's, I'm you're an addict. the addict. Or how many times a week do you come in there? Seven. Seven, that's, that's really six. great. You can't come more. My wife won't let me out on Sundays. Is that right? How much would you say in a, in a week would you spend on the postage on an average? Uh, 40, 50 dollars. 40, 50 dollars, yeah. Three times a week, about a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Yeah. And you can afford that? Yeah. yeah. Five hundred a week. Five hundred? Lend us a quid, would you? One hundred. <laughs> Wait a minute, I've got some. <laughs> I backed Cassidy's mount because he won that one on Saturday. And I can't think, our boyfriend, I backed that. I backed that. The Melbourne Cup is for Australians, the Derby and Grand National rolled into one. For Mum, it's Royal Ascot as well. She's backed almost every horse in the race. That's me, Right? Then, well. No, here we go. Now, bye. Thompson wanted to do that. Tristark was away pretty well near the inside, showing good speed in the early stages. Feet away with rising. Yes, now this is the moment when the whole of the Australia stops dead. All the factories close, all the workshops, all the offices, and everybody congregates to watch the race. It's the most marvellous thing in this country. It's an official strike, is it, Mum? Well, it's like that. You might as well say it's just like that. Five lengths to feet away as they start to accelerate. So Zephyr outside. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Second last Kiwi. And second last Kiwi. Oh dear. <laughs> Let her rip, boy. Get cracking, come on. My health is up the front. My health is up the front. Kiwi's still last on the turn. Kiwi's last. He's up to the back. Two. Here we go now. Into the straight. Come on, Matthew. Come on, Matthew. I don't know what came into you. My word, that's a marvellous race. That was great. Wasn't that good, Mari? Yes. Hey? It's very exciting. What do you think, son? What made Kiwi the favourite? They must have been all drunk when they predicted that. I've got it. I've got it with Peter too. I've got it with Peter. I've got it. When you want to save money buying jewellery, electrical goods, or just about anything, you need Sydney's biggest general auction listings. So where are you going to look? Are you feeling a little off colour, a little irritable, listless? It could well be caused by the air pollution. Bondi Beach, one of the most famous beaches in the world. Here you can enjoy miles of sand, blue skies, and the highest recorded rate of skin cancer on Earth. And Australia is not slacking in other areas. Liquid shit is pumped into the sea, and when the wind and tide act in harmony, it all floats back towards the shore. It's an amazing thing. It took Europe, what, 2,000 years to reach this standard of pollution, and yet it only took Australia 200. Australia, a nation on the go, and it's all going in the sea.
pollution control consists of occasionally closing the beatings. This is, of course... You want to see a freshwater crayfish? Yeah, well, he's one of the strangest creatures in the world. He's got three elbows. Spike, I got your brother. For supper, we're having yabbies, or freshwater crayfish, and damper, a sort of unleavened bread made from flour and Murrumbidgee River water. Down in the beautiful river, the old Murrumbidgee River. You've never had a damper made for you, have you? No, Bill. You're going to see how it's done now. All with right, these. All right. With these taloned claws. Damper was gobbled up by thousands of bushmen in the days before self-raising flour. It's part of Australian folklore, although most Australians have no idea how to make it. It's getting that nice, consistent feeling. I've... What does this remind me of? We, of course, we needed a few day, dates and raisins. Where's uh, Bones? Give us a bit of water, Bones. I'll get some water, Bill. No tap here to get water out of Bill. God, that's beautiful. Here's one. Bill? Great, lad. Can I pour it in? Good, just give it a bit of a bit of a tickle. That's a bit of the old Murrumbidgee you got there. Yes. I'm yeah. looking forward to the dysentery season, which we're all going to enjoy after this. Round the campfire, we sat spellbound, listening to a totally incomprehensible story right, from go. Bones. And the old MP stood up. Any old bugger be in between them bush dancers. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tarawana Hall. And I have a good time. So very sorry Mrs. Ray couldn't come here tonight, but she sent a prostitute and said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, now look. Let's. Didn't let's, you have a watch? Let's put all this. Make it off. Why come back for tomorrow, Bill? <laughs> there we are, lads. I'll put it okay. down there. But you'll never see another Australian dad or my logger. Now, OK. And what, and what about the potatoes, Bill? Beautiful. Jesus. Makes me hungry looking at it. It's, it's real to death. Oh, yeah, it's a real Australian dad. It's real to death, Bill. It's not. It's got a Wait a minute. Wait a you minute, see, mate. You just brush those, that, that surface. OK, well, yeah. we've got to get it away from this fire to get it cool. Right. <laughs> right? Now now you, just, it. you just watch me. Watch this. Would you, would you like to dip it in the, in the river and cool it? No. Now, that's a good idea. No, what about the... No. no Let him dip it in the river and cool it. I thought of the idea. It's a good idea. Yeah. Look out, you'll break the... Look out, you'll break the... You are, you are. Didn't I say, didn't I say, down there, that was that building. Down there, that building. Didn't oh, I say, that building. Didn't I say. I did down put it in the river, Bill. Didn't I say that? Oh, she broke it. Yeah, I'll tell you, I said, down, put it take in the it middle. out, Bill. Wait a minute. I said, well, if it's it broken down. now, it's too bloody late, yeah, isn't I it? I said, down, do it, Bill. I said, Bill, down, do it. Didn't I say that, Bill? Didn't I? I said, down, do it, Bill. Down, 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 put in the river, Bill. I said, down, put in the river. Didn't I say that, Bill? Didn't I say, down, put in the river, Bill? I said, down, put the pot in the river, and Bill, put the pot in the river. You got a pot left? Yeah, I haven't got a pot to piss in. Jesus Christ, he thought. I said, down, put the pot in the river, Bill. The damper was burnt to a cinder. We spent the night and had dinner in a pub. All of the silence of Dean Miner could have kept quiet. He talked to other people about other things, but he never said nothing about murdering. Bill, you'll have to translate what Bone says to me. I've been listening for three days. <laughs> I don't understand what he's talking about. Well, I must live here longer. Well, when I said silent, he was silent only about the murder. <laughs> he used to talk to people. <laughs> he never kept silent for 18 years. <laughs> so, that? so much for camping. I said goodbye to the world's greatest bushman and headed for boy war. So that's it. My Australia. Brother Desmond had come up from Sydney where he lives for a farewell sing-song. Goodbye, Desmond. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, Roy Roy. Goodbye, Australia.
सच में लाख 